Hi, we are Team 22061, and we created an automated ecosystem gas flux analyzer. Hi, I'm Matt Northfeld. I'm a biosystems engineering major, and I'm the fabrication lead. Hi, I'm Kyle LeClaire. I'm a mechanical engineering major, and I am the team lead. Hi, I'm Jacob Longo. I'm a mechanical engineering major, and I was the procurement and design lead on this project. Hello, everyone. So I'm Brandon Gavel. My degree is engineering management, and I am the systems lead on this project. Hi, my name is Connor Benson. I'm a student in the electrical and computer engineering department, and I'm the uh, computer engineer on the team. Scientists already measure the emission of carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor from the tree and soil water interface, but their data is incomplete due to seasonal flooding variability, and this requires a solution. The goal of our project is to design a fully autonomous gas flux measurement device that can measure gas fluxes both on the tree surfaces and on the soil water surface in the Varzea rainforest in Brazil. Our project will be tested and put under similar conditions in the Varzea section of the biosphere rainforest biome. The initial design stemmed from a drawing of the interface shown in the Department of Energy proposal. In the bottom left hand corner, the tree flux assembly is shown as a piston with foam on its end that will compress when the piston extends against the tree surface. The system is on rails and can adjust with varying water levels as seen in figure B. We used this concept when designing our system and included a feature that hoists the chamber to multiple levels above the water surface. This will be outlined later in our design process. So our project must satisfy the following system requirements. So it must complete 12 cycles per day, so about one per two hours, um, must withstand 10 feet of flooding due to high seasonal flooding variability in the Amazon in both the biome, um, take three measurements across two vertical feet of the tree, it must maintain a seal with a leak rate of less than 1% per minute. It must fit within a 5 by 5 foot area because of the tight location. It must operate in high humidity, um, in a high humidity environment ranging from about 30 degrees to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It must operate in a high rainfall environment with electrical components housed in a watertight box due to the flooding. Uh, it must include an emergency shutdown. It must operate on a 50 volt 12 amp battery and all units must be controlled by a central control unit. So our system comprises of four sub-assemblies. The first sub-assembly is the mechanical frame assembly, which consists of four aluminum posts, which prevents translation in the X and Y direction and only allows for vertical movement. Uh, our next sub-assembly is the chassis assembly, which will ride up and down the vertical four aluminum posts. And then we have the chamber assembly, which is our main assembly, uh, consisting of a horizontal linear actuator, closed cell foam, and pr a pressure sensor um, that will give readings when we're pushing against the tree and transporting gas back to the light core. And then we have the computer assembly, which consists of a Raspberry Pi and a linear actuator control board. The Vegas is broken down into three main electrical components, each serving an important purpose. The first piece is the controller. This unit is what researchers will use to control the Vegas out in the field. Users will be able to send commands via a user interface to start a cycle, stop operation, and reset to initial position. It will also display key information, like which unit is currently running, what state the vertical lin linear actuator is in, and various sensor readings. The second piece is the master unit. The master unit is what's controlled by the controller. It handles all of the logic relating to which unit should be active at any given time, and it controls the inlet valve to the LICOR unit. All commands are relayed through this device. The final component is the LICOR interface or the analysis unit. This comes in two varieties, the tree analyzer or the soil surface analyzer. Once a unit receives the start command, the horizontal linear actuator will begin extending until a proper seal is formed, where it will then hold its position for a reading cycle. After the reading cycle completes, the horizontal linear actuator retracts and the vertical linear actuator will advance to the next measurement height. All of the relevant information is then returned to the master unit and the controller device. So our initial chamber design was an ABS pipe with ABS caps on top, uh, but this had multiple problems when we began fabrication and testing. First of all, the inner face of it was too small. It worked, but we wanted a wider face that we could capture more gas. The second and bigger problem was that we used an EVA foam on the front, and this EVA foam we found to be too rigid. It caused too much force was necessary to compress it, and so we weren't getting a good seal. After the failure of our first chamber design, a new one was developed. 
This one was composed of a toilet flange, which is capped by an ABS cap. There are multiple improvements on this design. First of all, the design now includes an aluminum plate removed from the cap that applies force more evenly to the edge of the flange using connector rods. It also now features a more compressible marine grade foam, which is still closed cell. On top of that, it is also a wider area, which means we should gather a more accurate sample of gas that is consistent volume every time. Prior to installation at the biosphere, the system was tested at the BE fabrication shop. To approximate a tree, a large PVC cylinder was used. Uh, for this, we extended the horizontal actuator until the foam compressed and we sealed against the cylinder, at which point we blew many times around the interface to introduce carbon dioxide near the seal, at which point we then used the Lycor unit to measure the concentration of CO2. In doing so, we found that we had a leak rate of two hundredths of a percent, while our acceptable rate was one percent. Initial tests were positive. Now that the chamber system, gas concentration values, and leak rates have been tested, it is now time to install our system in the Varzea section of the rainforest biome at Biosphere 2. This is the Lycor 7810, a highly precise gas analyzer that has the capability to pump the captured gases from our system for analysis, and tubing will connect the chamber to the Lycor unit. Now we are looking at the entire system. A typical cycle of operation works thusly. First, a PVC chassis rides up the aluminum rails using the polyurethane block that floats on the water. After reaching this height, the horizontal linear actuator then extends the chamber which then seals against the tree using the pressure sensors at the front of the chamber. It then takes a cycle of reading for three minutes, then retracts, at which point the vertical linear actuator hoists the chamber assembly up by a foot. It then once more extends to make a seal with the tree and takes another three minute reading. It then retracts once more and moves up the tree another foot to go through the cycle once more. Once these three readings are done, the system will retract back to our starting position. Despite multiple challenges faced, including going through multiple iterations of the chamber design to ensure a tight seal, automating the system to run on a time schedule, and getting past the dense roots of the testing tree when installing the system, the automated ecosystem gas flux analyzer proved to be successful. This system will go through a few more months of testing and will produce highly accurate and resolved gas concentration measurements. Ultimately, however, the system will be installed in the Amazon rainforest where it will continue to capture gas fluxes through the dry and flooding seasons, which will make analyzing gas emittance from soil, water, and trees easier and more accurate than ever before. We would like to thank our sponsor, Dr. Joost van Heren, for providing support and suggestions throughout the entirety of the project. We would also like to thank the Biosystems Shop Manager, Mike Mason, for providing design suggestions and assisting with the fabrication of our system. Finally, we would like to thank our mentor, Doug May, for providing the resources and experience needed to complete our project.